This frog can jump around on its two powerful hind legs. But why are there so many hind legs on the frog in this picture? Has it been radioactively contaminated? Or is it simply a mutation? Surprisingly, the culprit that made this frog's hind legs look like this is a parasite. Today's episode is about parasites that are as smart as they are bloodthirsty. Unlike in other videos, I won't simply be showing horrifying parasite imagery. Now, let's begin the scientific, astonishing story behind parasites. In fact, there are 75,000 species of parasites that infect 45,000 species of vertebrates. On average, 10 different parasites infect each mammal species, and 12 types of parasites infect each bird species. Parasites account for as much as 40% of all existing species. Humans have all but annihilated most parasites that live inside our bodies through medicine, but in nature, it's a different story. This multi-legged frog is a prime example. Its body is inhabited by Ribeye Roya andatre, the parasite that made the frog's legs look like this. Isn't it amazing that a mere parasite can have such a drastic effect on the frog? Ribeye Roya andatre parasitizes the frog's leg limb buds when they are tadpoles, deforming the frog's legs. During the transition from tadpole to frog, the concentration of retinoic acid, a metabolite of vitamin A, plays an important role in the formation of hind legs. If the concentration if concentration is too high, they grow extra legs. If too low, their legs may not form at all. The ribeye roya andatre secreted retinoic acid, sharply increasing its concentration within the tadpole's body, thus making the frog grow more legs. Because of the parasite, frog's hind legs grow abnormally. Extra appendages or legs with deformities leave the frog unable to escape when a bird or another predator tries to eat it. In fact, in lab experiments, these deformed frogs jump 41% shorter and swim 37% slower than normal frogs. But this wouldn't be science dream if we stopped there, right? So here's an important question. Why did the parasite deform the frog's hind legs? Couldn't it just live comfortably within the frog's body? Does deforming the frog actually help the parasite in any way? Yes. Yes, it does. It helps with its reproduction. In order to reproduce, Ribeye Roya andatre needs its definitive host, birds. Ribeye Roya andatre can only mature and lay its eggs within a bird's stomach. So, for this parasite, the frog is just a temporary stop on its way to its final destination, a bird. You could say that deforming the frog's legs is a part of a well-thought-out plan. To help you guys understand, let's take a look at the life cycle of this parasite together. First, Ribeye Roya andatre's eggs are introduced to water via bird feces. The eggs hatch in water and go through the first larval stage, Myricidium. The larvae are then caught by snails, and the parasite increases in number within the snail's body. The larvae, known at this stage as Cercariae, exit the snail's body through its excrement or mucus. The larvae, Cercariae, that come out of the snail's body are eaten by tadpoles, where they settle down and steadily grow inside the part of the tadpole's body where the legs emerge. These larvae are called metacercaria. Finally, metacercaria larvae deform the frog's legs, making them easy prey for predators like birds and grow to maturity within the bird's stomach. The adult is called ribeye roya. But is this the only parasite with a master plan? When a parasite called leucochloridium paradoxum enters a snail's body, it reaches several strands of tentacles toward the snail's eyes. When the tentacles reach the snail's eye, they change color so that the eyes look like a tasty green caterpillar. Instead of seeking dark shaded shelter, snails infected with this parasite will try to make their way toward bright areas. A snail with caterpillar-like eyes wandering around bright places is inevitably easy to spot, and in the end, the snail is easily caught by a bird. Thanks to this, Leucochloridium can use birds to transport its eggs far and wide through bird droppings. Isn't that such a fascinating way to reproduce? Here's another example. This is an ant with a red belly. A jungle ant, Cephalotus atratus, that lives in the tropical forests of Barrow, Colorado islands, is infected with a parasite called Myrmeconema neotropicum. When infected with this ant nematode, jungle ants often develop red swollen bellies and frequently raise them toward the sky. What will be the fate of ants behaving like this? Because the ant's belly looks like a delicious fruit, there is a very high chance it will be eaten by a bird. The ant nematode then naturally enters the bird's stomach to reproduce. After reproducing within the bird's body, the ant nematodes lay their eggs, which come out through the bird's droppings. Then the jungle ants unknowingly bring the droppings back to their worker ant larvae and feed them, perpetuating the life cycle of the ant nematode once more. Not only that, you may already know that Gordioidea manipulates the brains of insects to induce suicide. 
The adult larvae of Gordioidea live, mate, and lay eggs in fresh water, which are then eaten by dragonflies and mosquito larvae. After these eggs hatch and start growing, the adult dragonflies and mosquitoes are eaten by carnivorous insects such as mantises and crickets. Since Gordioidea can only lay eggs in water, its host must also be in water. So Gordioidea makes a protein that acts on the nervous system of the insect, causing it to drown itself. We don't know yet precisely whether the parasite makes the insect forget that water is dangerous or raises the insect's body temperature to make it seek cooler places like a water's edge. There are also parasites that control the mind. A prime example is Toxoplasma gondii, which makes mice less afraid of cats. Rats infected with Toxoplasmosis are not afraid of cats. When normal mice smell cat urine, they busy themselves getting out of there. But mice infected with Toxoplasmosis do not run away. As a matter of fact, according to one experiment, they spend more time in rooms smelling of cat urine. The reason that Toxoplasma gondii controls the psychology of rats in this way ultimately because of reproduction. This is because Toxoplasmosis' definitive host is cats, and it's only by making it easier for the cat to catch the rat that the parasite can enjoy its breeding ground. At this point, do you not find yourself admiring the parasites for more than just their brutality? From our point of view, these parasites may seem terrifying, but in reality the characteristics of these parasites are just natural phenomena that have evolved via natural selection over many years. But is it true that parasites are just horrifying creatures? Would you believe it if I said that parasites played a key role in the evolution of other life forms? If you are curious about the next chapter in our parasitic story, stay tuned for the next episode. This is Science Dream, science with a sprinkle of fun. If you found this video educational and entertaining, please like and subscribe. It means a lot.